Hello my fine friends, I recently got the UR22C audio interface from Steinberg. I was intrigued by 32-bit audio and I wanted to have a mixer knob and an analog volume knob. I started with a Rode AI1 which doesn't have a mixer knob and continued with the Audient ID4 which has a mixer knob but the volume knob is digital. And in this video I want to just show you the software side experience of using this interface. On the website you can just jump to download quite a way below and here you will find tools and the Yamaha Steinberg USB driver. Initially I only installed the driver which you would have to extract and then go through setup and let the record show that there are no options during this installation you just have to take what it throws at you. There is also DSP Mix FX remote bridge which I guess is required when you use the app on iPhone or iPad which from the sound of it is probably something like Touch OSC Bridge. Anyways, the Yamaha Steinbeck USB driver is installed and here is the interface. Thanks to this I realized by the way that I had zero USB 3 capable USB-C cables. So I got uh, a new one so I could actually use USB 3.1 Gen 1 super speed which as far as I know has no benefits but it makes me feel safer. Instead of using the sound panel, that would be here. The device is called just Line for both playback and recording. And in Advanced, you have no options. It is controlled through this. So one can only wonder what it is that I said while the device was reconnecting. Okay, okay, so that was quiet for a second. All right, now it's back. Also, I don't like exclusive, giving exclusive control. So far, the only thing about this, I prefer to use 96. And my reason is that at 48, the Cyberpunk 2077 sometimes has audio glitches, but at 96, it never does, strangely enough. You can control the buffer of the ASIO or ASIO driver, but there is no setting for the bitrate. You would have to have software that supports ASIO drivers like for example Cubase or Adobe Audition and then make sure they support the right 32-bit rate. So to install the tools you download another zip file. By the way this one includes the driver so you don't have to install that one separately. Installation requires admin rights and as you can see it will include the driver, the Steinberg URC applications which in this case is only DSP Mix FX and the basic FX suite which has an equalizer, a reverb, and some guitar effects. These plugins will work in DSP Mix FX without activation, but for anything else, the eLicenser Control Center is also unavoidably installed. Since the driver is already installed, it will not do so again. DSP Mix FX, the application requires the suite, and the suite requires the eLicenser. Interestingly enough, the installation of the eLicenser is a separate process which you can just cancel, but you will just have to install it later if you intend to use these plugins in our software. So let's give DSP Mix FX URC a try. Uh, this is the interface. Let's go to the settings first. We can scale it like any true VST. You can see the version here. And you can update the firmware, but it's already on the latest version. When I first started this, it did update my firmware. The manual for the UR22C actually has good documentation about the DSP MixFX URC tool. So this, for example, is a high-pass filter. This here is a phase inverter. We can also link those together, and only the phase inverter is individual. Then we have an FX recorder, which enables, I suppose, the effects below. Let's pick one. Huge. Well, this is just an equalizer, I guess. Something more interesting. Uh, so that's what this does. It has a few various settings which are not appropriate for voice. Oh, okay, here we go. And uh, let's try out Crunch, which is just ridiculous, and I should not be using this for voice at all. Okay, so this is this is a joke, right? Maybe, yeah, a little better. It's still ridiculous, and I should not be using my own voice, as I said. Hello, this is also crazy, and I should not be doing this with voice at all. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Oh yeah, 
All right, for me to record the RevX effect, I actually need to first uh, enable loop back, either voice or live cast, and I need to send. Let's set it to zero. Maybe add some more time. Yeah. And we can check out different environments. I don't know what the difference between live cast and voice chat would be. Well, I can just look it up, I guess. This is different a little bit. It used to only be a button, but now there's two options. All right, let's set it back to whole and maybe play around with all of the options that are given to us. Why are these many different files, as they call it? I call them presets. Isn't this fun? I think it's fun. Whoop. Okay. Well, actually, I think this will be more fun with... Dusty. All right, enough of this. <laughs> this is fun. Okay, so we're back to normal. Whatever normalcy is supposed to be. <coughs> I know one thing for sure, my air is full of dust. So I activated the basic effects on my main PC. And then I tried doing so with the same key on my laptop and that didn't work. It said something about a USB E licensor, which is fine. If I was able to install the effects only for DSP Mix FX URC, that would be great. But being forced the licensing tool and the VST effects for other software, which now other software is recognizing and complaining that it can't use them, that is really freaking annoying. I just wanted to let you know if you are buying this because of a 32 bit rate, uh, make sure that the software you intend to record with supports ASIO drivers and uh, supports 32 bit and specifically 32 bit integer data. Because Audition supports 32 bit float. I don't know if this is a problem or not. All right, hopefully, this audio interface beginner was able to help you out with some information that was useful. Let me know if so. And other than that, have a good one. Till next time, ciao.